coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. The Lyric Theater in downtown Swift Current is known for attracting an array of entertainment to the stage. And more exciting events are on the horizon, following details announced at a recent press conference. Colossal Fever has a couple of goals. Um, the first one is kind of public exposure to field paleontology, this idea of what paleontologists do when we really go out and we collect. Every year, hundreds of accidents are reported across the prairies on the farm. And according to the Canadian Centre for Health and Safety in Agriculture, those numbers are highest between August and October. Thanks for joining us here today. The Lyric Theatre in downtown Swift Current has announced a number of new events for the coming year. We find out what they are in today's top story. The Lyric Theatre in downtown Swift Current is known for attracting an array of entertainment to the stage. And more exciting events are on the horizon, following details announced at a recent press conference. Denise Wall is the president of the Southwest Cultural Development Group and announced that thanks to a generous donation of $250,000 by the estate of the late Derwood Seafoot, a number of enhancements to the building are able to now move forward, the first starting with the installation of new stairs in the coming weeks. Well, we are going to be building a, a stairwell that will cover all three floors of the building so that we can access uh, all three four floors properly and exit them properly. And that will help us move forward with plans to use those floors. Uh, we're not sure exactly what that will look like. Um, what will change in the back of the building here is the green room and the office will no longer be there and that will give us an opportunity to move the stage back uh, in the future and expand the theatre space. And also, uh, we will be moving our office upstairs. In addition, General Manager Aina Adeshinsky and Artistic Director Gordon McCall unveiled the organization's new logo, The Lyric Presents, which will now be used in all promotional material. And from an entertainment standpoint, theater fans will be treated to three live productions at the Lyric, starting September 21st, with the Sparks in the Dark theater series. Uh, there'll be one now, uh, that's Mary's Wedding by Stephen Mascott, a beautiful love story about the First World War. And then at Christmas, we're going to do Mary Munch, which is the Robert Munch stories for kids of all ages. I still love them, and I, it's the kid inside us that we bring to it, as, long as, as well as little children. And then in the spring, in March, we're going to do a play called Motherhood Out Loud, which is hysterical. And it's about just what it says, motherhood, and all of the foibles and all of the fun. And uh, I can guarantee you will laugh. McCall further adds that the Lyric will extend the arts outside of the theatre setting to an outdoor festival with Shakespeare at Speedy Creek. A theatrical showcase which McCall is excited to bring to Swift Currents after founding the ever-popular Shakespeare on the Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. We're going to start with A Midsummer Night's Dream which is one of his most popular shows and we want people to realize that Shakespeare is very accessible and it is fun-filled and start to find out why he's considered uh, the very foundation of English language since the Elizabethan period in the world. To also bring people off the highway, as I call it, because we've got the Trans Canada right here. And if we can contribute to making Swift Current more of a destination point for tourism, it would be a great honour. It also allows us to do some programming out in the community in the summer when things are a little slow in terms of people coming to the theatre. An exciting lineup of entertainment and other events are scheduled at the Lyric Theatre throughout the coming year, with more details available online on their website. Grasslands National Park is steeped in history, and in this special feature, we take a closer look at its east block. So 
today you're going to be going to the, the same site uh, as yesterday. So we'll, uh, we're going to be loading up in the vehicles and uh, going around. We'll be hiking in and uh, then Emily will meet you there and set the day for you. Every one of these white rocks is a dinosaur bone. So this is what we call an explodosaurus. Um, this is a dinosaur skeleton, um, without question, that has eroded out of the hill. This is an unusual bone trail because you can see that it just stops right there. Um, so what could have happened is either the skeleton has completely weathered out of the hill and there's nothing left up there. I'm Dr. Emily Bamforth. I'm a paleontologist with the Royal Saskatchewan Museum. So right here, we're in the east block of Grasslands National Park. So what's unique about the park here is that all of the rocks that you see around us represent the very last days of the dinosaurs. Uh, this is about the last 300,000 years of when the dinosaurs were rocking the earth. And what's unique here is that we have a lot of rock that represents a very short period of geologic time. So we can study in detail the trends in diversity. So both dinosaur diversity as well as the diversity of the plants and animals that were living here. Fossil fever has a couple of goals. Um, the first one is kind of public exposure to field paleontology, this idea of what paleontologists do when we really go out and we collect. It's a really flat, platy bone, absolute characteristic of Triceratops frill. So there's a very good chance this is one animal um, and that this is kind of the back half and over there is the front half. It's also exposure to the fossil resources of the province as well as to paleontology as a science. And of course, from the museum point of view, this is actually helping our research. So everything that we collect here in fossil fever uh, goes back to our museum and into our collections and then can then be researched by the researchers. So it's kind of a win-win situation from both a visitor experience and education and a research point of view. Where we're standing right here um, is right on the U.S. border. So the latitude at this point is about 49.04 degrees north. So about kind of 100 years ago, 1874, there was a geologist by the name of George Mercer Dawson, and he was coming down this tributary to the Frenchman River Valley, mapping the 49th parallel, and he and his team came across a big bone. So this intrigued them, they collected it, and they sent it back to Ottawa, and it turned out it was a dinosaur. It was the very first dinosaur ever collected in Canada, and it was collected right here in Grasslands National Park. here is the point in geologic history where the dinosaurs disappear forever. This is called the KPG boundary. So the KPG boundary is the physical extinction layer of the boundary. It's the only mass extinction in the world where you can actually put your finger on the point in geologic time where it happened. So the K stands for Cretaceous, which does start with a C, but the K is a symbolic for Cretaceous. Um, and the PG is for Paleogene, which represents the time period after the dinosaurs. So this layer, this boundary that you can actually physically see in the rock, um, is the, the layer between these two groups of rocks, and it represents the end Cretaceous mass extinction. Um, what the layer actually is, is the fallout from the bolide impact, the meteor impact, um, that was a contributing factor to the dinosaur mass extinction. And so what's kind of neat about the KPG boundary is that it's bounded on both sides by this black stuff. 
so you guys all know what this stuff is, right? Cool. Cool, that's right. This stuff here is coal. I think this is a really special place, um, both in terms of the fact that we have the extinction preserve, the fact that we have the dinosaurs, um, and the fact that it actually hasn't been that well studied. The study of paleontology in the park is relatively new, and so lots to be discovered, um, lots to learn, and lots of great experiences to be had. Uh, what I love the most is the thrill of discovery. So never knowing what you're gonna find. Um, if you see, there's nothing like seeing a fossil sticking out of the hill and first starting to poke around it and discovering that it goes further in. It also gives you a real respect for life on Earth. When you realize that what you see today is only one tiny, tiny sliver of time and that all of the diversity of life that we see around us today has persisted for millions of years. And it just really gives you a, a deep, profound appreciation and respect for nature. Numerous accidents are reported each year across the province during harvest. And producers are being reminded to stay safe when out on the field. Another harvest season is underway across Saskatchewan. And as many producers prepare to put in long hours out on the field, safety should always be top of mind. Every year, hundreds of accidents are reported across the prairies on the farm. And according to the Canadian Centre for Health and Safety in Agriculture, those numbers are highest between August and October. Putting in the long hours impairs your judgment and your reaction time. So it's um, we often don't think of ourselves when we're trying to to get a lot of work done in a short period of time, but that's when we need to do it more than ever. And um, that includes things like um, making sure you're eating well, good nutrition, and staying well hydrated, drinking a lot of uh, water, um, having healthy snacks. Um, and uh, it's when you're working the long hours, um, it, it helps to change your jobs periodically, um, get out and take a short walk around your equipment. Um, and there's the power of a 20-minute nap that uh, can really help you feel refreshed and restored when you're putting in those long days. Almer adds that 80% of accidents during harvest involve machinery or other motor vehicles such as grain trucks, with 8% of accidents involving youth under the age of 14. Therefore, extra precautions should be taken when children are near equipment. It's dangerous to bring the young children with you when you're working. Um, most children involved in serious farm injury events are actually in the company of an adult at the time of the event. Um, so it's important that young children are in um, designated play areas so they're not um, running around where implements um, and uh, machinery are, are coming and going into the yard. It's also important um, that youth uh, that are involved in farm um, activities are, are doing tasks that are age appropriate, that they're de developmentally ready and um, to do those tasks and are supervised closely. By taking a few extra precautions, such as watching out for overhead power lines and turning off all equipment before manually removing any straw or other debris, you can help ensure everyone has a safe harvest. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews. Thank <laughs> you.